Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another night of More Than You Asked For. That's a little bit of JavaScript and a whole lot of talking with me, Kyle Shevlin. Uh, glad you could be with me tonight. Um, yeah, stream's just warming up. We'll see who, who joins us tonight. Uh, really, yeah, I had a, I had a crazy week. What about y'all? Um, let's see, what happened in my week? Uh, shit, there's so much to happen, and I'm trying to think of what, uh, I think the most important thing in my life that happened on last week, as silly as this might sound, is my wife took a job, um, she's just working, uh, with some friends on something, but, uh, it's been a big change in our life, uh, this week, as, uh, you know, we adjust to her being out of the house, uh, all day, uh, she used to work remotely from home, and so our cats are rebelling about that. Um, but yeah, we're making adjustments to that. We're we're trudging along. We've bought all these things to try and fix the problem. Like, I don't know if you could see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and show you something. I apologize for the unsteadiness. It's got to go over my shoulder. I'm trying to do this all in reverse, people. Uh, but if you could see down there, the weird spaceman thing, that is an automatic cat feeder and uh i've got i've got one cat who like i kid you not she would eat herself to death she has no concept of enough is enough and i have another cat who who like won't eat um he's just not very aggressive wants to graze all day and i'm, I'm really worried that between the combination of the two that they're gonna find a way to both die I mean that kind of joke jokingly, but um, uh, yeah, uh, it's been crazy. Uh, Scott and Jen are both in the chat already. Scott, that is not an IoT cat feeder. Um, it's just programmable. Uh, that would be cool. Um, I do think there is an option on that model to get it with a webcam so you can check it out. Uh, we've actually already ordered a different feeder for our less aggressive cat. It literally checks his uh, microchip in his neck before opening up the, uh, the food area. So it'll deny the hungry aggressive one while opening for him. And uh, we're kind of excited to see that. Um, we got Kevin Van Gelder in the house too. Uh, he's been chatting with me on Twitter all day. Kevin, glad to see you. Um, we'll see who else uh, joins tonight. Um, should be fun. Uh, so I was kind of stumped for some ideas of what to cover. And, uh, luckily, um, Jen, Nick Code Monkey gave me a whole bunch of ideas. And, uh, also, um... I'm going to pull up a new window. I'm going to put it in the in my other screen real quick if I can get it. I'm going to pull up uh I decided I decided to get my life organized this week. Uh I'm not very good at that. Um I'm pretty much shit at it. I can't make plans. Uh I just I just have to keep plugging along. But uh and maybe I'll make this board public. But uh Look at me, I'm growing up, I'm using organizational tools. But uh, I made a, a React 101 Trello board and it's got shit that we can cover. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna add to this stuff. You guys can you know, send me ideas and tweets or if I make this public, you can put topics to cover. You could even update the cover for me, I'm just saying. Um, but the point being, um, I'm gonna start making a list of all these things that we need to cover. And so, um, oh, I'm gonna add one right now. Someone asked about authentication. I don't know that that fits in, in React 101, but I'm just gonna throw the, the idea in there. Um, and so these are things that uh, we can cover, and I figured I would cover a few of these tonight since I don't have like a huge game plan. Um, okay, cool. Scott says organization is good. Um, it is it is good uh, I just I'm not as motivated as some people to just t check things off I'm adding accessibility as I read it Jen totally 101 uh, react native probably doesn't fit actually you know what Kevin I think react native does I don't know react native very well but I'm gonna put it on here and uh, 
I'm going to call it the training wheels version of React. Literally, it gives you the components to use. Smiley face. Um, I mean, it, it might not actually be the training wheels, but I've, I have heard a few people who do a lot of React Native say, like, it's, it's easier than uh, regular React because uh, it's already got the components for you and the Flexbox model and all that. Um, yeah, Kevin, I would gladly take your help on that. Nick and Jen says it's not much different than React. Uh, yeah, I've done like one little thing in it, but uh, cool. So here are some ideas. Feel free to send them in the chat and whatnot. I will add them as they come up. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, sorry, random thing. I know y'all really want to know about my life, not about my coding, but uh, I have bit in the bullet and I ordered a rowing machine. So, you know, me and my wife are gonna get yoked, yo. Um, <laughs> no, uh, my wife has a bad back. I could have a better everything. So we're pretty excited to have that coming. It should show up tomorrow. Gonna work from home tomorrow. Hooray from working from home and, uh, you know, getting your sweatpants on, right? Like that that's how I, uh, that's how I always work when I work from home. Sweatpants, hoodie, good ball cap, that kind of thing. All right, so uh, just to recap what we did last week is last week you could probably tell by, oh, actually you can't tell. I need to switch it. I need to switch to the coding scene. Look at that. Wasn't that nice? I'm going to do that again just for funsies. See, this is my monologue scene. That's literally what I call it. It's when I'm like, you know, chatting with y'all and focused on y'all. And then when we're not focused on like direct talking, we go to this. Ah, uh, yes, someone might, uh, I'm seeing this, hold on. Sweatpants are my everyday remote for the win. And Kevin's not wrong, yeah. Got that Hacktober shirt. Um, uh, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, you might know that there was the misfortune that none of the stickers came. <laughs> No stickers came with my Hacktober shirt. I can't really. I couldn't. I don't think I could be an actor. I'd be shit. I'm a little too angry for all that. I don't know. Um, but yes, um, no no stickers came with mine, but I posted it on Twitter. And I kid you not, like within a minute, they were like, what? And they were all trying to help me. And they asked for my address. And I know I have some stickers coming along the way and I will be able to fix that issue and populate my laptop with even more uh, graffiti. So it'll be good. Um, I see the shock on a few people um, in the chat worried that I didn't get stickers. I'm waiting for your reactions when it catches up. Scott's like the only reason I contribute to open source is stickers. That's a good reason. That's definitely a good reason to contribute to open source, I tell you. All right. Enough about me. Um, although, I'm always happy to talk about me. I'm one of my favorite subjects, I'm just saying. Um, all right. Uh, actually, you know, I am going to plug something about me. One last thing. Sorry, folks. Sorry. But uh, if you didn't know, I started a podcast called Second Career Devs. You know, because I'm a second career dev. Y'all need to uh, come and uh, check it out. We got the second episode up. Or I keep saying the we. It's really just a royal we. Like, it's me. It's it's me. But, um, yeah, we got that second episode up. Uh, Sonia Gupta, if you should find her on Twitter. She's kind of fun. Uh, she She's a hoot. She, uh, she uh, takes no prisoners. She is a warrior for uh, justice and equality and uh, literally was a lawyer and uh, this episode was really great can i do vodcast instead of podcast maybe someday if i get fancy enough um right now I, i'm just i'm doing audio because it's what i know uh, I, I won't, I won't, I won't say I can't do something in the future. Maybe someday I can. Um, it would be cool. Um, just more stuff for me to learn. I already know how to record audio. So that one's, uh, that one's working for me. Ah, he finds them a little more interesting. That, that makes, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, uh, in a literal 
in a literal sense, like half of our brain is like devoted to sight. Like literally your whole occipital lobe is like the back part of your, your brain. Um, so the fact that things are visually stimulating or more interesting makes sense to me. I mean, it's part why I'm doing this. Could you imagine this being the radio? And now, and now we're going to write some code, right? Like it would be really weird. I'd have to tell you like, and I'm writing bar A equals B equals, you know, like, uh, I don't think that would make sense, but, um, you know, I guess the way I consume podcasts mostly is, uh, with my ears, and um, I post them on SoundCloud right now. SoundCloud has a pretty nice feature to automatically build an RSS feed for you. And so that's what I've been doing. So, uh, but yeah. Um, I, will, I will consider it if it becomes an easy option to have both the, uh, the audio and the video at some point, And I can add it to my life without like too much shit. Uh, I will definitely consider it. I'm not shutting it out. I don't want you to feel shut down or dismissed. Your request is heard. Okay. Um, alrighty. So enough about me. Enough about the shit I'm doing. Uh, let's, let's get into some React stuff. And I just thought of something. I didn't talk about it. It kind of goes with some of the other things. But uh, React.children API. You can't really do compound components without the React Children API, so I'm gonna move that up there. And uh, yeah, okay, closing that out. Alrighty then, let's recap last week really quick. Last week uh, we did some advanced uh, React. In fact, I'm gonna plug it for them. Uh, but Kent C. Dodds just put out an advanced React course on Egghead IO. If you get a chance, check it out. If you can't see that, you can always watch his uh, basic React uh, for free. It's always going to be free. Uh, in fact, Joel was talking about that. Uh, Joel's the founder of Egghead IO. He's like, this is going to be free. This is a resource to the community. So if, you, if you're looking for that, go check out um, Kent C. Dodds stuff. I see an SSR request. Uh, definitely going to add that to my list. Uh, that's a good one. Um, I've done SSR once for a project. It was pretty easy once you did it. Um, actually, in general, there's a bunch of Webpack stuff we can do. Jen and I were talking about it. Um, so SSR gets added. Webpacky stuff. Uh, we'll do code splitting. All that jazz. Cool. All right. Okay, now, now I can find the recap last week. We were talking about uh, two kind of advanced patterns that allow us to write uh, reusable code in our React projects and share it around. And so two of those patterns and the two we focused on are the higher order component and the render prop component. And uh, if you remember, um, I oh I did push these up to the repo, so there are notes. Uh, I actually was a good person this week, and uh, like I went through and I made the comments for you. Let me make sure you can see that in the screen. Uh, let's see. Ahi, I read that wrong. I first thought you were like making fun of the SEO on my websites. I didn't realize you were saying the SEO on your websites needed improvement. I thought you were taking a shot at me and I was like, why? I'm just a good person. I'm, I'm donating my time. But then I realized it wasn't about me. I hope you guys are appreciating the humor. Um, it makes it interesting to me. I, I mean, think about it from my end. I'm literally talking to a circle inside a device. So I have to imagine that you are laughing at my jokes to make it worth it. So anyways, um, there you go. Uh, sweet. All right, so looks like I, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit, make sure y'all can see it pretty well. Looks like you can see it pretty good. Um, but yeah, you can go check this out. This is github.com slash Kyle Shevlin slash react-101. Um, I've shown it to y'all before. Uh, I could show it again. 
but if you ever need to pull it down as a reference, um, this is where you can go and, and you can get it. Um, if you're liking this so far, you can give me some stars. I'm completely narcissistic like that. I mean, every, that's how JS devs live. We live off stars. Uh, we don't need food. We only need beer and stars. Uh, anyways, as anyone always asks, my editor is Sublime Text because I haven't gotten on the VS Code bandwagon yet. Actually, I've given it a couple shots. I think it's awesome in some ways, but the one thing that drives me nuts is pain splitting. It's, it's, it, or, rah. That's my official word, rah. The pain splitting sucks. Um, it doesn't have an Atom skin so much as I'm just using the Oceanic Next uh, color theme. It is so pleasant on the eyes. It makes me feel warm in my, um, in my heart. And then I, you know, I have other things. I, I have all sorts of Sublime Text packages. So, um, but yeah, let's see. Um, uh, Jen asked, did I see that they make uh, updates this week? Yes, I did. Uh, I know they're getting closer. Um, I'm going to close. Can I show you why I really have a struggle? It has to do with this package in Sublime Text called, uh, I'm, I'm going to list my packages. Um, if I can get to it, it's this package here. It's called origami and, uh, it's, it's, it's a very like, um, I've never used Tmux, but I've been told it's very Tmuxy in how it splits panes and moves stuff around. So this isn't higher order, this isn't react 101, but I, I'm going to show you just so you know. Um, so I have like, you know, it's, it's a, it's one of those where you do command K and then some command and. Uh, and it works. So uh, I forget what that's called. There's like a special name for when it's two sets of keystrokes. But like I've I've got these amazing keystrokes. If I want to split this to the to the right, it's just Command K, Command Right. If I want to move the file, it's um, Command K, Command Shift. Uh, trying to think and talk at the same time screws things up. Uh, um, I can change focus on the windows with these, right? Like I'm, I'm changing focus. And what's great is uh, I can continue to just split and split. And maybe I want to go down. And I'm just going to keep going down. And uh, it's ridiculous. But like I've never needed splits like this. But uh, and you can like uh, you can clone files too. And um, it's ridiculous. But I've gotten so used to being able to do this. Like see. Uh, I just cloned two files. Um, I've gotten so used to doing it that like I really struggle when I go to VS Code and I can't even like split the pane uh, the way like I want to. And also like I can't just split open another pane. VS Code itself doesn't have this concept of an empty pane, and that's what bothers me. Like um, so, let's say I'm down to one pane. Like in preparation for adding another file, I might just want an empty section. I've gotten used to doing that. And um, VS Code can't do that. And it's, I don't know why. I'm just a stubborn old man, I guess. All right, I hope that's enough of that. I am I mean, I'm happy to talk and chat about all my, my uh, setup and shit, but that's probably not why you're here. If it is, cool, cool. Um, Back to what I was talking about. We covered higher order components in render props last week. And uh, just to give you a very quick recap, higher order components are functions that take components as an argument and return a brand new component to you with uh, some munging and some values uh, applied. Um, this is how we can share code around our app. Like we might take a component and we might take the props from that component that we were expecting and or um, we might take uh, some arguments and we will pass them into the next component. Say maybe we were doing some fetching on a component did mount hook. We could take the URL we plan to fetch and the callback or something like that as arguments, and we pass them into the component that we return. Uh, it's a very useful pattern, especially if you've done functional programming. It should make a lot of sense to you. I even showed how you can compose new higher order components by composing other higher order components. And we covered that last week. So um, uh, that's that's higher order components. Um, please go check out the file if you want to read up on it. I think I wrote a pretty good uh, write up on it. 
And then uh, we can also do uh, render props. Uh, so render props are a little different. Um, what they are is they're really um, a descendant of the function as children pattern. So in React, every component has a children prop, right? And that children prop can be empty because there are no children, um, or it can be an array, it can be a single item. And because we understand that there's always this prop, we can also abuse it by giving it a, a function to expect. So in the function as children pattern, we do something like this, where we have a component and on its props, we expect children, but we expect it to be a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire that function and we're going to supply it some arguments. Um, and so we're giving it, in this case, I gave it my details. Um, and then uh, the way it's used is uh, we use this in our, in our markup somewhere and we hand it the function that we now want to pass as children, right? So like an, like maybe an easier way to see this would be like const uh, use uh, args. That's uh, use person args. That's what I'll call it. And name, age, job, title. Um, and then I want you to return this JSX, right? And I'm gonna steal this right here. I'm gonna copy it. Uh, if I could type, oh no, ah no, no, that's ugly. What the heck happened there, Kyle? All right, we'll save it. We'll save it. I should just save and let Prettier do the work. But you can also do this: use person args, because uh, we know um, this is a function, and those will get passed in. That'll work. This is just to show you that what we pass is the child as children to Kyle as a function as children component is a function. And this is this is a function, right? So I hope that's really clear. Um, so what, but what I was calling it was uh, render props, right? Um, because this kind of evolved into, instead of giving children as a function, what if we instead move that functionality onto a property that we call render? on the component and um and essentially we're kind of handing over um like the job of choosing what to render to the function right like um so kyle provider doesn't choose what to render it just gives the um the underlying f the function it's going to get the the stuff it needs and this is very similar, uh, the difference being um, rather than some ordered arguments like I had up here, I chose to make it an object. Um, I think especially if you're gonna pass many things, this might be a little bit uh, easier to use this way uh, because, you know, honestly, ordered arguments, like you, you have too many of them. I mean, we've all been there where you, like someone made a seven argument function and you're trying to remember them and you're just like, why couldn't you just give me an object where order doesn't matter? But anyways, I pass a, an object to this function, and uh, uh, I think the way we're going to have to see how, it, how it's used is to, um, let me pull up the app file. I realize you might not be able to see it right away because of my face, but uh, if I scroll up, scroll up here. Okay, so I kind of did, I did that. I have, a, um, I have a user component somewhere. Let me pull that up. So user component expects, look at that, a uh, props object that has name, age, job title, right? And we show it here. And so this is a function, right? And we're talking about render props is a component that takes a function on its render prop. And that's what I did here. I passed it the user function, which happens to be a component. It has the signature we were expecting and we get the result we were expecting over here. Um, one thing to note that's kind of neat about these patterns to pay attention to is um, I'm not, I have not figured out quite how to compose render prop components the way uh, you do higher order components. I'm not sure it's possible. It might be. When people talk about composition of React and like JSX, 
Um, sometimes they might strictly mean like mathematically, but uh, mo like like we are with higher order components. But I think most of the time we're just talking about the fact that we can order our our functions in a way, or like we can re like we can have a function that we can. Um, partially apply arguments to or children to or something like that. Like that's how we make more components, right? Um, but one thing that's interesting is like, if we were to actually inspect this and we were to look at the React uh, virtual DOM specifically, um, you'll notice something. So this is, our, um, this is our higher order component and you'll see a bunch of nested um, unknown components. And that's because we didn't give them names um, but these are our, um, our part, these are the ones we use in our compose. So this right here, this outer unknown, if I go back to the, uh, the hawk file. So the outer unknown is actually this. It's the, in like the enhancer function might be a good way to call this, right? It's the function returned by compose, right? And, uh, that is our furthest unknown. And then you can actually see like how they went in. So if you p watch the props as they build up onto the final user component, you can see um, like the innermost one uh, applied the name, the middle one applied the age, we're working our way out, and the outer one uh, applied the senior software engineer. And then when the DOM works its way down, that's why we see those that way. So. Um, I think this is just kind of neat to know that like in your virtual DOM, you'll end up with a bunch of these uh, nested components if you're going to use something like this. There are ways around it, um, uh, but I'll leave that to another time and frankly to your, to your own research to some degree because I think that could be fun for you to, to find out. Um, but if we go to the other one down here... You'll notice on render prop component, we don't have anything like that. We don't have any, um, we're not using any um, composition in any way. So uh, you, you'll notice it just shows um, this. It shows that we're supplying a function to render and then that function's getting fired and, and this is what we get. Um, I don't know if it'll give us any, I don't think it gives us any, just we know it's a function. So that's what we covered last week. Um, if you have any questions about that, be sure to shoot them in the chat. I'll try and get to them uh, as we work through more stuff tonight. What is that? What was that? There was an artifact down there in the lower left. I have no idea what that was. Um, I'm going to catch up on some people. I see... Uh, All right, some people never use panes. That's cool, uh, but can understand why I find it lacking. I appreciate your empathy, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, uh, drag and drop anywhere to panes. That would be great, but the whole point of me having the key bindings is not to have to use my mouse uh, for that shit. Um, I actually, I have a weird setup. Um, I told you I'm old and stubborn and stuck in my ways. You know, I have a keyboard. I haven't yet graduated to a mechanical keyboard. Maybe I will, but as silly as it sounds, the, the actual old like keyboards, um, I feel like I trip on them. I've been using these Apple keys so long and they're so shallow that like um, anything with any like reasonable height, I feel like my fingers trip. Uh, maybe I have lazy fingers. Like, you know how people drag their feet? Maybe I drag my fingers. Um, but I use the trackpad a lot. Um, but I do keep a mouse around. I'm just keeping a cheap old mouse we had. Um, I only use this when I'm editing music because it's much easier to use a um, it's much easier to use a, a mouse to edit music. Um, hey, our weekly troll joined the stream. Senior software engineer. <laughs> hey, trolls, you're so much fun. Who knew that, you know, we'd all grow up to basically live in a fantasy land where trolls fucking abound? Who knew? Who knew? Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Hot keys in all the editors? Sure. I've spent plenty of time uh, configuring my editor. Let's see. Ahi, one thing I was trying to do with a hawk was to add an outer component. So I have a TD component, and I want to add 
add outer component TD, inner component TR data. Um, I'm not sure just reading that because it's it's not the greatest formatting. The chat that's not your fault. Um, that's just the chat. I just want you to know that. Um, so can you write like a JS like like um, like a hey spin JS spin something a code sandbox? Send me an example. I might be able to help. But uh, just reading what you said, Ahi, um, you might want to look into recompose and uh, the nest um, higher order component. Uh, that's N E S T nest like a bird's nest. Um, and then Royal JS, I feel you. I hate change in the equipment I use. That's right. Change sucks. No, I'm just kidding. Some change is difficult. Some change is really, really healthy. Like like I mentioned my rowing machine earlier. That's going to be healthy change. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay. I th I hope you don't mind that I've, I've talked this whole time. And I, I don't feel like I've really taught you enough. But uh, I hope you're having fun. Uh, if you're not... Um, I forgive me. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention, I'm getting a new monitor. I'm really excited about this. I got, I'm getting one of those nice high resolution ones. Um, so I'm actually a little nervous about how much crap I'll be able to fit on the screen. Uh, I'm considering like even maybe putting the chat on the screen. Crazy, right? Like, but, uh, I might do that. It, it'd make my life easier. So, um, uh, instead of having to do this where you guys just, I, I mean, I do get it. The profile of my beard is like really nice, but I'm sure you don't need to see it all night. Right? Like, I'm just saying, um, all right, let me, you know what I should do? I should check this. Uh, I should just keep my Trello board up and we'll just start knocking stuff out. Right? Like. Oops, sorry. Uh, I also use that all the time. I use the little three finger slide up thing. Okay, here's what I was thinking we we could cover uh, uh, first tonight. Like, we didn't really talk about should component update. I think this would be a really good uh, thing to cover. This thing kind of goes in line with uh, pure component and uh, it, it'll be kind of useful because um, I think I think there's a lot of confusion out there. Frankly, like I still have lots to learn about it, um, because performance is performance is not something many people will ever get to a point where they just know. Like unless you're like uh, Adi Asmani or something, and all you do is seem to write uh, medium thought leader pieces on performance in PWAs and service workers and all that stuff, right? Like. Um, and some of you might know this already really well. Um, I know it probably to a medium level, like, but I'm going to show it to you and just so you're aware of it. And we'll look at the docs too, because I think it's really important to just, uh, kind of look at the docs when you're trying to get like, what is going on, but I, I'm just going to start at the top of my list. I think this is well worth covering. So, uh, why not? Uh, actually, Jen, Jen says, have you dual full screen yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, and I think that would be honestly too much for me. I'm going to, as weird as this sounds, and actually my computer over here is kind of a weird thing, but uh, I actually really struggle to look at my screens on the left side, uh, for a long period of time. Um, the reason that is as weird as this will sound to some of y'all, but, um, I was an all-American collegiate golfer. Uh, I almost turned pro. Uh, I was very good. Um, I spent many, 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 many hours playing golf. And uh, golf is like a, it, a, a, a kinesthesiologist would call it a, um, a, a unidirectional uh, action. Like you always go in the same direction with golf. It's not... Uh, uh, bi-directional you're not using both halves of your body so my body is kind of imbalanced um, I might be able to do it sitting down but my left shoulder is higher than my right uh, my left pec is bigger than my right pec but my right delt is bigger than my left delt and it's from doing the same action again and again and again 
and it's created an imbalance in my body that actually like it kind of pains me to look to the left for long periods of time so at work i i can't really do this at home because of the way i have my music stuff laid out um and the camera and stuff but um, at work i always have my laptop over to the right and i just don't look at it very much and i just i'm a one screen kind of person it's enough for me um, but that has to do w with why. So just getting a bigger screen is going to make a big deal for me. This monitor is going to go uh, over on my wife's desk so she can have her, uh, her she used to use this as her monitor um, when she was working from home, but I'm going to give it back to her so she can uh, have dual screens while she works on her uh, book review blog. So, uh, oh, Two foot, okay, two panes on the same monitor. Yes, I do that at work sometimes. Um, it's pretty nice. We'll see if that's what I end up doing with this monitor. I still like doing this. Uh, we're going to call everything old man habits die hard kind of thing. So, um, sorry for that over explanation, people. Uh, all right, let's do some component, should component update. Um, I'm gonna make I want to make like a really simple um, component that we can kind of test for this I'm trying to think of a really great example of this I kind of need I kind of need two components really because I want communication from uh, basically a parent to a child and I want a child to, to determine whether it should re-render or not. Um, so um, I'm going to make, uh, I don't know what I'm going to make. Let's call it SCD SCU parent. Oh, I need to give it a capital name. Import React from React. I really need to make this snippet. I, I've had it, but I had to adjust it when React 16 came out, and I haven't updated it since. Um, I'm probably going to need a class to do this. So let's get that component keyword going. Okay, I'm going to split to one. And then uh, it's going to yell at me about prop types. I don't know that I need it, but I mean, I might need it. And then, then we can do class SCU parent, the SCU parent. I don't know what a SCU is. Um, and we'll just leave it like that for right now. Export that default, get it out there into the world. Okay. And then I'm going to make a child, uh, SCU child, and uh, we're just going to do this. Okay, so I have these two components, um, make Trello, the irony. We could someday. Um, that would be fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to have this parent component, count, eh, component, and actually I'm going to have it render the child, so we'll pull in the child here. And uh, we covered life cycle methods a while back. Um, And uh, what what one of the lifecycle methods we didn't cover was called should component update. Um, let's return something for now. Right now, we're just going to return an SU child. It doesn't have anything, so let's make sure we add a render here. Uh, and we'll call it. We'll just say hi. I know, really great components. And let me drop that in the app real quick. Um, we will just building up all these commented out uh, things. 
Um, import as the parent. Excuse me. And then uh, what will we do? I guess I'm just gonna start Ooh, taking stuff out. I don't wanna keep. Yeah, it's gone. And it's gone. All right. And we'll use the box. I like the box. And the parent. Okay. Okay. So I have these two two uh, things. Prop types are defined but never used. And they're going to tell me it should be a, a pure function. Uh, they're a giant pain in the butt right now. Why? All right. Let's start with Kyle is not defined. Oh, I commented stuff out. That should be gone too. And it should say hi. Good. It says hi. We've got all sorts of linting errors. That that's expected. Uh, but our child, um, our child says hi. Let's. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I want child to like a, expect a prop. And dependent upon that prop, uh, I want to determine uh, whether it should update or not. Um, you might have a situation where, um, uh, so so in React, um, I really want to look this up for sure. Let me let me just pull up the docs. Uh, there's I don't want something like said for in perpetuity uh, that's really like wrong. Um, actually, what would be a quick way to look this up? React should component update. Will it look that up? Thank you. Okay, can I, can I just go to this? If you're wondering what this is, this is my dash integration in Alfred. And so, um, should component update takes two, uh, two props. It takes the next props coming in and the next state. So whenever one of these uh, changes, it's going to uh, fire this lifecycle hook. Um, use should component update to let React know if component's output is not affected by the current change in state or props. The default behavior is to re-render on every state change, and in the vast majority of cases, you should rely on the default behavior. Um, should component update is invoked before rendering when new props or state are being received, defaults to true. So. Uh, what they're saying is if uh, under the update component takes next props, let me uh, next state return true. This is the default implementation. It's not even doing anything with this. It's just always going to update whenever this fires. Um, and that's that's good. Like for the most part, our apps, we would want them to always update. There's, um, in fact, I, I the only reason I'm covering this is is because um, it's important to know, but it's not. You shouldn't abuse it. Like React is really fast. React is really smart. Like you can trust the system, for the most part. Um, the time that you need to know this is when you are hitting performance bottlenecks and you can't get gains anywhere else. Um, and because like props or state change, they, they propagate down through their children. And so um, that's why it's important to uh, just know this, this is aware. Um, and then uh, it says here, returning false does not prevent child components from re-rendering when their state changes. Um, so, Oh, oh, okay. We kind of skipped something there. So it defaults to true. If it calls false on this element, this element doesn't update, but it doesn't prevent children from re-rendering when their state changes. It just prevents the the propagation down. So if there's state held at a lower level, um, it will still update. But I do think it means you'll you'll stop passing in. Uh, we'll look at that. We'll, we can create a scenario where that happens. Um, currently, if 
SCU, as I like to abbreviate them, returns false. The component will update, render, and component did update will not be invoked. Makes sense because the render isn't fired and no updates happened. Uh, in the future, this may um, be a hint rather than a strict directive. Interesting. And then uh, this is why I said they were related, but if you determine a specific component is slow after profiling, you may change it to inherit from pure component. Instead of using um, component here, you can, oops, sorry folks. Um, there is a, another uh, uh, class uh, called pure component in React. And this, uh, this, um, this, already the pure component implements should update components so you don't need to write it and it does a um, it compares this dot props with next props and this props and next state and return false so it's the same as doing um, this dot props uh, equals this dot next props uh, I'm trying to think what the best way or this dot Kind of need to group these together, don't I? No, that'll work. This dot state equals this is wrong. Sorry. So essentially, it's it's doing this. Right, isn't that the easiest way to think about it? Give me a second to think about it. No, that is not the easiest way to think about it. Rather than ors with nots, you can do ands. So this is what we would do. If props equals next props and state equals next state, return false, nothing has changed. So, um, otherwise, return true. Um, maybe the other way would actually be a faster fail. Um, I'm actually, I'm working on a CFP, like a, uh, 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 I have this idea of doing a conference talk on the relationship between symbolic logic and, what the hell is that? Uh, my door slammed, sorry. Um, the, 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 the relationship between symbolic logic and, co and, com and, and programming. And uh, one of the weird things is like not A uh, or not B is the same as A and B. Um, and just, and understanding that. Um, Anyways, um, this is what Pure Component uh, puts under the hood. My cats are fighting right outside the uh, right outside the door. Yo. Um, so that's what's going on. So let's like actually make should component component update do something for us. Uh, it's going to be really arbitrary. It's not going to be super useful because I haven't thought through it. But it should it should um, show you how it works. So let's uh, should component update equals next props next state. I'm only going to use props in this case. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pass an arbitrary like number in. I'm going to generate it from the parent. Um, and I'm going to show that number. Okay, I, I told you this is arbitrary. This wouldn't really make a lot of sense. But um, if next props dot number is less than five, for example, um, I want you to return false. Otherwise, return true. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a random number generator on the parent. 
that um, will pass in a value to the child. And I will give it a button on click equals uh, this dot uh, generate random number or I'll just call it handle click. Uh, occasionally I do, Kevin. Um, most of the time in this case, because this would get ignored, I would just drop it. Sorry, just to just be clear, Kevin Van Gelder asked, does anyone else use an underscore for unused variables? Um, I do, especially like if I'm stuck using an arrow function that has it. Or if I know that I need to get to the second, like I need to get to an, uh, like I have ordered arguments, right? Um, so if I needed state but not props, I think it totally makes sense to do that. Um, so I think it's worth doing. Um, the only thing is if you have a refactor and someone's like, what is this? Um, that would be the only thing. Um, in this case, though, not needing this one, I could just drop it, right? Uh, that's uh, JavaScript doesn't care. It just ignores extra arguments past the functions. It's kind of nice that way. Um, we're going to handle the click. Uh, RNG. Have you, uh, any of you play video games? Uh, uh, whenever you're like, there's this this term in a lot of video games about loot called RNGesus. Like, you're just gifted things based on random number generators. Um, I thought it was pretty funny the first time I learned about it. Um, uh, we're just gonna this dot set state. Uh, our number and so const number will equal math dot random uh, I want a random number between 1 and 10 I'm trying to remember how to do this this will give me anything between 1 and 0 uh, I can do math dot floor you think I'd have this memorized by now uh, times 10 uh, that'll round down but it won't do I need to do plus one? Someone tell me in the chat how wrong this is. So, but um, if you notice, I'm doing things the old-fashioned way with binding and stuff. I'm just doing it for funsies. Um, We'll just set it as a number zero. Actually, there was a really interesting conversation on Twitter between uh, Axel Rauschmeier and what's his name? Benedict Maurer from uh, Google's V8 team. They were talking about um, this versus using the transform class properties, which would be like, do it this way and talking about how this kind of defeats the whole purpose of having uh, methods on a, on a prototype. It was, it was kind of interesting. Fun fact, Twitch on Xbox is terrible. I'm so sorry. You watch me on your Xbox right now, Ruzba. You, uh, um, or Ruzba. I, you know, I really need a pronunciation of your, the, the beh part of your name. Is it bay? Is it beh? Is it B? I don't know. I need it. Um, give it to me. <laughs> um, do the, Kevin Van Gelder had? Do you have a hand up? I'm I'm trying to. The, I think inline bind is cleaner. What he's saying is um, instead of doing this. And Kevin, go ahead and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think you're saying this, right? I'll give him a second to do that. While we do that, as always, more than you asked for is sponsored by beer. 
I will always take donations for beer. And, and yeah, that'd be nice. It is Christmas time. So, no, fat stabby arrow. Ah, are you, okay. He, he is talking about what I had uh, before. I think you're, you're, are you talking about that, Kevin? I know there's a delay. So once again, uh, more than you asked for is sponsored by beanies. If you want to send me some floppy beanies, this one's kind of dying. Um, I will take those just saying, um, so uh, I will say this is really clean. It's really nice to use this transform class properties way. Uh, from what they were talking about in the conversation is that this uh, ends up recreating uh, functions over and over and over again throughout your app. Um, I, 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 I could possibly find it. Maybe I'll tweet about it later. Um, it, was, it was really in interesting. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I think most people, most React apps could get away with this. Um, but, you know, if you start to hit performance bottlenecks, uh, part of the reason is you're generating new functions each time you uh, unmount and, 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 and destroy, uh, mount and destroy components versus like this being like a prototype basically and being in existence once. And then when it's bound to an instance, it's just uh, pointed at the reference rather than generating a new function. I think that's the difference between it. Um, that's one of those things I wish I had a magic brain that just could store all the uh, JavaScript knowledge out there. Like, like I don't know, like Kyle Simpson or something, right? Like he's got it all up in his in his noggin. But um, then we got to put this back. Um, okay. So what I'm doing um, is uh, every time the button gets clicked, um, we're going to generate a new random number and we're going to set the state with it. And then uh, we're going to pass that here. Uh, this dot state dot number. And then in the child, we were saying if the child is less than five, don't re-render so let's see how well this worked it looks like I made a mistake somewhere what's it telling me unterminated JSX contents what did I do wrong oh multi-line JSX people gotta have your your parentheses it also looks like I still didn't close something oh forgot that too there we go. There we go. All right, we're gonna reload this. Am I blind? I don't. See, I I don't actually have a donate button, Kevin. I don't expect people to donate to me. Um, I was just saying it'd be funny if you did. If if people think I really should have some kind of donate button, maybe you're right. Maybe I should have something for my time. Um, I'm doing this because it's fun for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I can work on that. I can have a donate, uh, donate some uh, some beer money to me. Okay, so it updated. Let's uh, you know what? Just so we know it, every time, uh, I want to log it out because otherwise we won't actually know that uh, a miss happened. Maybe I could add misses. Um, number of misses and as soon as I ever have two things uh, I do this because that's just who I am uh, let's put this also in a div because I want it on its own line alrighty so um, and then every time the click happens, I'm also going to increment misses by one. So I have to do this. 
is uh, this dot state dot misses plus one. Oh, actually, I don't want to do it every time. Uh, I want to check uh, number less than less than five and oh let, I have to make this a ternary actually otherwise it'll return undefined set my state all wrong um, if that's true this dot state otherwise this dot state dot misses and because I did that I'm gonna do this I hate repeating myself when it's like a, a dot like this dot chaining um, it's actually one of my biggest pet peeves about um, um, about Ember is having to write this dot get all the time like I just want to be able to do this and then once I have to do that a billion times I just want to be able to do I miss it so much I mi I don't I don't get the destructure nearly as much in Ember and it's a it's a bummer bums me out uh, Kevin is right I should be able to add a PayPal button I will work on that uh, if people are up for it I, I will always take a little beer money so oh, we missed on the first one okay nice and as you see the number didn't update we logged out too that's the number we passed to our child um, in fact, I have not, I've not dove into this. I'm going to look at it. Our child might actually see the number prop didn't even change. Uh, let's do this again. It didn't change. It changed. Okay. We're just going to keep clicking this five, five worked one. Okay. So you see how should component, um, update is, is kind of working for us right now. In our parent, we're generating these, uh, random numbers and we're passing them into the child and the child is saying okay I'm paying attention to props um, if the number prop is less than five don't update um, otherwise do update like um, and you always want to make sure you return uh, you have your true return too. Uh, otherwise uh, I'm not actually sure what will happen let's learn this is how I learn people I'm just gonna forget it and see if it uh, remembers to update um, so we missed with a two, missed with a four, we got a 10. So, okay. Yeah. Always remember your true. Um, it looks like should component update. If you forget to return a Boolean, we'll just fail and throw a warning at you. So if you're going to implement this, uh, make sure to return true. Okay. Um, so we have that. And we can see how this is working. Um, and I think I think this is good to know because sometimes you might not need to. Um, oh, I haven't refreshed the page. Did I save? I did save. Um, there we go. It's working how it's supposed to. Okay, so there's one possible scenario, very unlikely, but if we make the um, If we make the randomization smaller, it'll happen more often. But um, let's implement this as pure component. So we'll get rid of what we're doing. Um, and so the scenario is if number is the same, right? If number is the same, it won't change because it's going to do it itself. So I'm going to implement pure component so you can see how that works. And then actually I think we're going to do something neat and I'm going to show you how you can make a pure component higher order component because um, I think I know how to do that and I think it'd be fun to combine last week's lesson and this week's lesson. Uh, Kevin says destruction is probably one of my favorite things. It's one of my fucking favorite things too. I love it so much. It makes code so clean. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. All right. So if you remember, pure component implements should component update under the hood. Um, and I'm just going to show you what that should look like so we don't forget. But it's basically going to say um, uh, if 
Well, I did ands, right? This dot props equals next props. And this dot state equals next state. Return uh, false. Uh, I I'm I don't know if the linter will fix this. Otherwise, return true. That's what we said either. Ah, array destructuring. That's also pretty fun. Although you are, you are um, oh you are actually doing array concatenation via the spread operator. That is pretty nice. I could simply return the inverse of my if statement. That is uh like like oh. Yes. Very, very, very keen, Kevin. I like it. Uh, good call, digging it. Oh. Like that. I'm digging it, Kevin. It's good stuff. So that's what's going on under the hood. Uh, remember that, people. Um, so right now, it'll, it'll always update unless uh, we somehow get two numbers back to back to be this. Oh, there we go. We lucked out. Um, it wasn't good. It, it didn't update, right? Um, let's, uh, we can make this happen a lot more often. Although it did say, it didn't say, oh, because our misses are not the same. Um, we're going to do, instead of misses, previous number. Um, and then what we need to do is if number equals previous number, we'll just do this. Uh, what do we want to do? I basically want to indicate if the previous number was the same, uh, was the same, false. Um, uh, <laughs> This is not a really great name. I'm just, you, you, you realize I'm going quickly. So, uh, will that work? Um, every time I need to get this, I need to, uh, I think that'll work. We'll give it a try. Uh, I want to reduce how often, how big this is. We'll just make it three. It should happen more. I mean, I could make it two, but. Uh... I think it thinks my order of operations is in. Oh, no. That's why it removed it. Got it. Okay. Oh, is it not going to say, uh, I could do that. I might actually be able to do this. Uh, I could also just coerce it. That's ridiculous. All right, folks. Sometimes you go through a couple iterations to come up with the optimal way to show something. There we go. Good. Yay. Sweet. So uh, pure component is a really fast way to uh, reduce renders if props and state don't change, right? Like, 
uh, I think that's really useful to know and have in the have in your brain. Um, I mean, it's pretty unlikely you're going to get to a place where you need to put it in, but you know, some of you might be working on some really big projects, or especially projects that are maybe highly interactive or or something like that, and um, it might be worth knowing and keeping in the back of your brain to to use. Um, be be I caught I give you I I urge you caution so that you don't uh, um, you know maybe get yourself in a hole where you you're prematurely optimizing and and because of that you are um, you might run yourself into some bugs without realizing it but uh, that's a way to implement that if you don't want to just do uh, this or Better yet, if you want to make a stateless functional component a pure component, um, we can come to our hawks file file and uh, we'll make a new hawk called with pure. And the pure hawk is actually part of recompose, so you don't need to use mine or write your own. You could pull in that library, but if you wanted to write your own, um, what you can do is with pure. Uh, you can accept a, a component as uh, an argument and uh, we're, we're actually going to need a, a pure component here um, and stateless functional are props than JSX right but what we're going to return is we're going to return a class extends pure component and then in here, we're just going to call render uh, our component, and we're going to spread the props. So this is a really quick way. Oh, I forgot return. I love when Prettier catches those things for me. Um, so now I have a higher order component I can use on stateless functional components, right? Um, let's say I have a stateless functional component like uh, my user. Uh, actually, I have that. I have my user component here, right? If I wanted to make this uh, a stateless functional component, I could do with pure. I tend to write like with for my hawks. You don't have to follow whatever naming convention works for you. Uh, but then now this is a pure component. So there are some quick gains you you can have um, if you don't want to have to write it out all the time or if you want to be able to keep your stateless functional component for some reason without having to do the um, the refactor to a class and implementing the pure component word. Uh, did that make sense to everybody? I'm going to go over that really quick. We're using the higher order component pattern from last week. Um, in our higher order component we make a function that accepts a component because it's a stateless functional component that returns a function that accepts props. Like you can see this, this is a props, right? Um, those props get applied to the component. And in this case, we're gonna return a class of pure component. Um, and this is how we get our, our should component update, our SCU under the hood, yo. Right, and that's why you would want something like this. I'm gonna take y'all's uh, silence in the chat as um, acknowledgement that you fully understand what I've done, and uh, yeah, cool. I will just save this, and why not? We'll make. Uh, we'll make that work. I'm cool with it. Works for me. And uh, I guess a new thing we can do now in React 101 is uh, I can start moving things from the topics to cover to the uh, to the covered list. 
kind of nice. And then we'll be able to look back and be like, look at all the things we learned. We learned so much. Um, all right, folks. Uh, I need you to give me a two-minute break. Um, as what happens when you drink beer is occasionally you need to go to the bathroom. So I'll be right back. Uh, have yourself uh, a party while I'm gone. Uh, maybe tell me your... Tell me what your favorite animal is in the chat. I would love to read them when I get back. And I'm back. I see someone said no breaks. Uh, I'm so sorry, Ruse Bay. Um, like Tuesday. Uh, if I ever write rap again, I, I'm going to use that. Um, sorry, uh, I, uh, I just needed to use it. Most weeks I don't. Um, so let's see who's here. Um, Napcats. Napcats, haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Welcome to welcome back. Uh, we got a, a water bear, commonly known as a tardigrade. That's really nice. Cats and elephantarians. We got a platypus in there. Um, duck build, as if there's any other. I actually don't know. Are there other platypi? It'd be good to know. Uh, let me know if there's other platypi in there. Um, plumber asked, do pure components just do a shallow compare of props to the state? Yes, that is what they do. Uh, I will go back to what we were... Where did I have this? Uh, can you see this right here, um, uh, plumber? So that's essentially what's going on under the hood. Um, Jen says, favorite animal. I've collected elephants because one person gave me one and the others noticing gave me more. Same with owls. My favorite is probably a myosaur. Is that a dinosaur? Uh, I mean, I'm going to guess. I, I don't know what else it would be. Um, oh, Kevin's like, no way, face in the way. That's right, because I'm in my monologue mode. I'm getting better at this. Okay, uh, I'm going to bump that up. I'm going to bump it up. Can you see that? Oh, one of my cats pushed their way in. All righty, no big deal. Um, uh, can you? Yeah, my mouse cursor is in the way. I'm a dummy. All right. Okay, uh, there's a platypus weevil, apparently, according to Wiki. Uh, Napcats didn't know that before, neither did I. Uh, Jen is confirming a myosaur is a dinosaur. Um, that makes sense to me. Um, uh, yeah, cool. Um, ah, what is my favorite animal? I think my favorite animal... Well, growing up, my favorite animal is, like, man... 
was a cheetah. I loved how fast they were. They were amazing. Like I always wanted to be that fast. I didn't really know how slow I'd really be. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just barely above average with speed. Um, athletic, just don't have like a super long stride or anything. Um, and yeah, so I loved them. In fact, do you guys remember, um, guys and gals, do you remember uh, Zoo Books as a kid, maybe? Like, there were these really thin magazines, right? But they were, like, focused on an animal or t uh, uh, a species or something. And uh, I kept the Cheetah Zoo Book in my desk the entire uh, second grade year because I was that selfish about it. No one else could learn about them, just me. I'd pull that thing out and, and learn about them all the time. My, my wife, on the other hand, her... Uh, her favorite uh, animal is, ooh, I just bumped the mic. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Hope that wasn't too uh, too disturbing, trying to move that back into position. Um, her favorite animal is the penguin. Like, to her, they are just stupid cute. Uh, I don't think I can argue with her. They are very cute. Um I guess as, as an adult, though, my favorite animal is a dog. I just, I really want a dog. All I have is cats. Uh, no offense to cats or cat lovers, but I really want a dog. Can't wait to have one. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, I don't know. I might have to change when I stream, because you never know. The dog needs breaks probably even more than I do. Okay. We have covered a bunch of shit tonight. A bunch of good stuff. Uh, mostly uh, should component update and pure component. Um, what dog breed? I really want to rescue a bunch of pit bulls. Honestly, I hate the fact that they are so stigmatized. Uh, I had one when I was younger. They are big old softies if you treat them well. Um, so loyal. Um, yeah, I, I would love to like. I would love to someday own like a significant portion of land. Uh, or at least something with a yard and a garage and uh, I'll have like my dogs and I'll have my wood workshop and uh, I will I'll just build stuff at night code during the day build stuff at night um, if that day ever comes the twitch stream will probably be done because unless I transfer it to like woodworking but that'd be really loud I don't think that would work um We've got a horned octopus shout out. I didn't know that was a thing either, Ruse Bay. All right. Okay. So we covered um, should component update, pure component. Man, we have done so much. Do y'all realize? Like, I, 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 I mean, this is like. Maybe my 10th stream, something like that. I didn't record the first few, I think, or maybe I did. Uh, but, like, this is episode 8, and I feel like I feel like we've covered so much because I think part of that is that the React API is, is pretty small. Really, like, there's not a lot you need to learn to be comfortable enough to start making great stuff. And I think that's what's wonderful about this um, this library is that it doesn't bog you down with learning a bunch of conventions and it really just says here are a few guidelines here's a few patterns go have fun um it would be uh really great unrelated topic is the trello board public uh currently this one isn't it could be i've never done this uh sure I can make it public. Uh, there you go. I don't know if I can limit um, how y'all edit it. Uh, I'm not really smart with Trello. I have no idea how to do that. Um, I mean, I think it'd be cool if you could like 
Can I make this one editable? It'd be interesting if I could just make this one editable, maybe the topics, but um, I don't know shit about this. So there you go. I don't know if you can find it, but um, that's what it is. Uh, So, yeah, I'm happy to make that public, happy to let people, um, it said only people directly added can edit, but you can see it, right, Kevin? So I'm cool with that. Um, I think probably the easiest thing for y'all to do to give me, um, this kind of stuff is, uh, my DMs are open. You can find me on Twitter and it's, it's always happy to send it to me. So I've got flow there, nap. Nap and uh, I mean Ahi, and I got just testing. Um, I'm gonna cover that at some point. So what I'm what I'm want to do to uh, prep for that is um, uh, I'm pretty good with just when it comes to like unit testing and 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 snapshot testing. Uh, I need to be a little bit better when it comes to integration and especially uh, end to end. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So I need to do a little research for that. Uh, part of my shortcoming, and I think we all have shortcomings. So like, I'm not afraid to uh, admit this. I don't want y'all to think I'm some like magic expert on this stuff. I just learn it and share it. Like I'm the same as y'all in a lot of ways. Um, uh, but uh, I didn't do testing until I got to this job. I worked in agencies beforehand, and for the most part, we just pumped out code so fast that our team didn't find it worth it. Um, and so I never really learned it the first three years I was on the job. And it's only been my own self-effort in the last year to like start to learn this stuff. And uh, I do TDD at work now, but I'm still, I'm still always getting better. And uh, Flow, I've used a little bit, but uh, there's like a Flow cheat sheet. Like Flow can get, uh, flow can get crazy. Um, same with, uh, I've not used TypeScript to really give you um, that. Like, I, I, it just will take me time to learn those things to share them. But uh, these are all the flow types you can use with, uh, I think, a lot of them. Here's here's a bunch of them for React. So it takes a little while to um, to get those under your uh, under your fingers is how I often describe knowing code. It's under your fingers. It's muscle memory just as much as it's uh, brain memory. Uh, Aki asks, please record if you do. Uh, well, I record every episode. Um, in fact... Uh, I need to um, start uh, saving up to buy like uh, an external hard drive for this. Um, uh, I think it'll be good given that these videos are pretty big. Two hours tends to be like two gigabytes or a little more. Um, and uh, yeah, I also think getting an external hard drive might help the software out uh, because uh, you know my software is running on the same disk it's writing the files to. And, and generally, you can you can help things out like in audio recording. They recommend saving it to a external hard drive and stuff like that. I've just I've never I've been kind of cheap about it, but I think I need to do that. Maybe I need to add that donate button sooner so that uh, y'all can do that. Um, but yeah, um, Kevin says Twitter and Twitch should be sufficient for topic suggestions. I think. I think that's good. I mean, I'm always up for talking on Twitter, y'all. It's like my favorite thing. Not That's maybe a little uh, hyperbolic, but I, I really have enjoyed how much Twitter has changed for me in the last year. Um, it's, it's allowed me to meet most of you in some way um, and allows this to even be possible to be able to hang out with y'all and conversate and have a good, um, um, good time. Uh... But yeah, um, man, I think I've quintupled my following maybe in the last year. I don't even know how. I, I don't even understand. I don't understand why you're watching me. I thank you so much for it. I, but um, I kind of feel to some degree like I'm, I'm just a person, right? Like, and it's it's really kind of, it's mind-blowing and I appreciate it. And I, I thank you for it. A um, little quick chat here. Uh, does Twitch handle the recording? So, um, yes, Twitch will hold on to a stream for a while. It's about two weeks. 
Um, I think I think it's about two weeks. Uh, maybe Napcats is is a little wrong. Uh, is a, is right? Maybe I'm wrong or anything like that. But uh, my software also records at the same time, and then I upload that recording uh, to uh, YouTube. So they are there in perpetuity, people. If you've never gone to my YouTube channel and you need to see this again, uh, it's just YouTube.KyleShevlin. I've been uh, uploading them to a playlist called the More Than You Asked For playlist. Um, and so uh, they're there, um, you know, making sure you, you have them available. I, In fact, uh, because of this, I've been thinking of um, switching and doing... Um, like, I will still stream, but uh, I think it'd be interesting to start breaking them into small lessons and actually putting them on YouTube because, you know, I can't imagine someone trying to watch through two hours of me chatting. You know, it's a little different when it's real time and maybe you're working on stuff um, than it is uh, to actually sit down and watch YouTube for two hours of me chatting and something that happened in the past and they can't see the chat and they don't understand our our They don't understand our connection. They don't understand the way we relate to one another, right? Um, D. Dunny says it's the beard magic. I assume he means on how I got all my Twitter following. It is It is uh, pretty magical. Um, the word I use to describe my beard is magna glorious. It's a combination of magnificent and glorious. Um, in fact, uh, I love the word so much that on my LinkedIn profile, it says, uh, recruiters, please use the word magna glorious when you reach out to me or I won't listen to you. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought that was a good idea. Um, uh, it has worked out a little bit. I've only had a few recruiters reach out to me and actually read my profile. Um, but yeah, um, uh, speaking of which, I, I'm I'm in the process of updating um, just because I want it updated. You know, you, it's never a bad idea to keep your resume fresh. Uh, I'm working on this. I need I need to do a lot of work to it. But last night I had a little fun, added some toggle night mode ness to it. Uh, I don't know what person would ever look at my resume of things and need a night mode, but you know, it's fun season. So. Um, I shared that on Twitter yesterday. Um, oh no, Kevin, you shared an emoji that my computer doesn't recognize. Here, I'm actually, I'm going to screen cap that. I'm going to show you what I got. Let's see. I'm going to show you what I got, Kevin. Uh, and then if I come to my finder... Don't look at all my files, yo. Don't do it. Uh, did it did it capture it? That doesn't look right. That's definitely not right. Is it in the wrong order? There we go. See, Kevin, that's all I saw, man. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. That's all I saw. Um... Uh, let's see, Kyle Shevlin, if you stream on YouTube, it auto adds to your channel. Uh, that is true. Uh, I don't know if, if if there was some way to the, um, if there was some way to do the stream on both, like, uh, I don't know. I picked Twitch because a couple of my friends are on Twitch, uh, doing live coding. Uh, Shirley Wu, she's a good friend of mine, uh. We kind of, uh, we bonded this year and uh, we met at React Rally and she's just awesome. She's really cool. Uh, she just spoke at a conference in Japan and then I will get to see her in, oh, uh, what's today? I get this, I'm giving my first conference talk in 10 days uh, on, De well, today's almost done. So 10 days on December 16th. Um, at, uh, at DevFest Silicon Valley, uh, down in Mountain View. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I, if I wasn't streaming, I'd be working on my slides. In fact, maybe I should just do that and chat with y'all during these last 23 minutes or so. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll be giving my first conference talk. It's about, uh, functional programming and, uh, I'm trying to find ways to like add some, uh, some humor to it. So, um, but yeah. 
I, I did Twitch because Shirley does Twitch and she kind of inspired me to do it. I'm like, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. Granted, she's got like 5,000 more people following her because she's awesome and she's made these really cool things that everyone knows about. And I'm just a, I'm just somebody who likes to code and likes to teach, but that's all good. Um, uh, new, uh, oh, a new cat. Also, Suze, Suze Hinton also streams on Sundays. Uh, she does a lot of, like, uh, like I think she does, like, Node hard, Node on hardware and stuff or IoT, that kind of thing, which she, she's really cool, too. Uh, she's been really kind. She's dropped in the channel a couple times. Um, uh, I really appreciate the, um, the ideas and the support she's given, too. So, um, yeah, just Twitch felt like the right thing to do. Um, and I kind of, I kind of want to do a fun thing. So that's why I'm doing it. In fact, uh, I, I think I'm going to uh, submit, uh, a conference talk idea, uh, for our chain react. Um, Kevin, Kevin might get a hoot out of this cause I, I think Kevin's involved in chain react. I assume he would based on where he works, um, and what he does. Um, but I think I'm going to submit a talk about, uh, like why everyone should Twitch stream. Uh, maybe not everyone, but you know what you can learn from Twitch streaming and that adventure, and I think it'll be a lightning talk kind of thing. I was talking to Jamin about it, so um, he thought it might be a neat idea. If you're on the um, if you're on the uh, the the proposal committee, um, uh, don't let my my awesome personality bias you in any way right now i'm just kidding i hope you guys could see me wink otherwise that was the weirdest thing i ever did on camera i actually don't know how detailed this is hold on i'm gonna do it again uh if you're on the committee i really hope my personality doesn't sway you in any way yes i'm being ridiculous so um i i, I am kind of in a monologue i'm just gonna keep this up um Uh, let's see. Ahi is talking about, um, I like the idea of a two way stream. I actually do think that would be really cool. I really kind of wish I could see y'all, um, like Google hangout style or something. Uh, I think that would be really neat. Um, I think it'd be really cool maybe on some of these episodes to like partner with someone and make like, um, uh, some kind of a, uh, pairing stream. Uh, I, I've talked about doing it maybe with Jamin sometime, um, or at work. We sometimes call it when we do three. We call it tri paratops. It's kind of nice. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking for other things like not if they're a hundred by a hundred windows. I you'd still have to get the data to even populate, right? You just have to limit what data you got down. Maybe drop frame rates. Uh, I just think it would be nice in the sense of uh, sometimes I wish I could hear you, even if I couldn't see you. It'd be sometimes nice to be able to respond uh, in real time. Um, but but yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 good stuff. Um, I'm sorry I'm not super code heavy tonight, folks. Uh, I didn't have a really great plan. Um, it's been kind of a crazy week. I think I mentioned that at the beginning, um, between, uh, my wife starting a new job and, uh, I get home and, um, uh, you know, you, we all got adulting to do. So, um, uh, especially I have to get adulting done in order to do this. So I had a lot to do tonight and I didn't, I didn't get it done. Um, let's see. Um, we call it family programming. Would love to do a group project, a family GitHub repo. Yeah, I've been thinking, so, okay, let me run an idea by you. Um, you know, uh, uh, Jen, I think, suggested earlier, like, uh, like Trello clone. Um, I, I was thinking it could be neat at some point to, like, I, I kind of want to start actually building something. Um, I have a few apps I've been working on that I, I haven't really finished. Um, and it would be kind of nice to like get them done. I'm not, to be perfectly frank, I'm not the best about shipping my own, own projects. Uh, uh, I tend to, I tend to do the ADHD thing and I see a new squirrel and like I, I, um, 
I lose focus to some degree on personal projects, but I, I have a couple of them that I think would be great to work on on the stream with y'all. And like, I could try and talk about how I'm answering like problems and, and fixing things. And then y'all could give me feedback as I did. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe it could be something where like this could be public and so y'all could make PRs to it if you really wanted to. Um, and we could even do that. That would be interesting. Like, like how I do PR reviews. I, I don't know that it's super interesting, but I don't think I do anything special. I'm not, I, I don't consider myself amazing at them, but like, you know, maybe it's something we can chat about. I mean, it's just, it's just a dev topic, right? But like uh i could we could make an app together in, in a way um and so um let's see one year to finish a personal startup product from my experience first six months is easy but last six months is a grind of dedication yeah especially if it's like a bigger bigger app right like um uh i could totally see that um for example i i will show it to you um let's see Give me a second. Uh, I'm gonna stop that. I've been working, uh, so I have a folder called side projects. And I think in here I have feed, uh, nope. Sorry, I've actually put it under work because you know, like I've done so much work on it. Uh, I think I've put it on here, haven't I? Okay, feed me app. Oh. Uh, let me um, yarn run start. I haven't looked at this in a long time. But uh, so I have this idea of a pretty simple um, app that all it's meant to do is like store menus and allow me to make, I mean, store meals and allow me to make uh, one week or two week menus really quick. I've just been bad about finishing the darn thing. And I have it hooked up to. Um, I actually have it hooked up to Firebase. I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. We'll see if it it fires up. And like I haven't given it any styles or anything like this. But hey, it kind of works. Um, I think this could be a cool app to uh, improve and make better on the stream. My wife would really appreciate it um, if uh, you know. Essentially, like I have some meals saved. Um, it's just your basic CRUD app, and then eventually. I think it would be cool to be able to, um, I have this vision, I'm sorry, you can't see shit. Uh, I have this vision where, um, um, yeah, I'm calling it Feed Me, like, uh, Feed Me from the, um, oh, what's that movie with Rick Moranis? I actually think the, um, the favicon should be the, um, the, the Venus flytrap. Right? I think that would be really cool. Um, but I think this could be something we could work on, right? Like, uh, or something like that. Um, but I have this idea where um, I actually think in the end I would have like a sidebar nav and uh, you click like into um, like the menus creator and uh, like I could just see, like I want you to be able to, like maybe a second bar is all your menus scrolling up and down and maybe these are just icons. I have this idea of like these flat, funny icons that you give them. I don't know. And then I just want to be able to drag them onto calendar days and just have it done. Um, I think that would be a, a cool little little thing. Uh, maybe a, I've got a piece of paper here. Maybe I, I think y'all can get it, but um, if I needed to draw it out, I could. Um, the hard thing is just finding time, right? We all we all struggle to find time to do this kind of thing. Um, but this is something I have, and then I have another project that um, uh, I can show. I, I don't need to pull up the code. I don't know why I did that. Um, I'm gonna back up. Is it under work? It isn't. It's under side projects. Yeah. I have this other one I started. I know there's other projects like this out there. Um, which sometimes discourages me from working on side projects when you already know something like it exists. 
But this one I'm calling Chains. Uh, I think there's a, an app out there called Streaks, which is kind of the same. Uh, and what it's meant to be is, um, it's literally just an app. And I think this would be great for me to learn React Native with. Um, oh, did it not, it started, okay. Um, it's literally, why, let me give it the hard refresh, maybe. I shut down Feed Me, didn't I? I did. Oh, did I did I restart it again? Ah, that's funny. I somehow uh, I thought I switched directories. Um, I don't know what I did. That should work. Sorry, y'all. Um, uh, you know, the, you've probably heard the Seinfeld story of like, just start doing something and don't break the chain. Like you guys are probably working on it yourself or maybe at least vaguely aware. Like, you know, if I go to like my profile, uh, um, like I'm working on maintaining this chain, right? It's a chain. And so what I did is like, I made an app that, uh, uh, can I sign in with Twitter? I forget if I enabled it. I think I did. Cool. And so you add a chain like push-ups. Uh, apparently I don't have the form right and I have something wrong. I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, but then I have these, um, in the code I literally have these SVGs. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I wish I could show it to you really quick. Uh, How can I switch which data I'm using? I gotta remember how I did this. Um, Cause I kinda wanna fake it for you, but I could probably do it in Redux. Let, let me try and fake it in Redux. Um, it's been months since I did it, but I was really proud of this. I made an SVG chain and then you can rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And so they look like they interlock together as you build your chain up. So, Okay, state. Chains is, um, ah, sorry, I'm not remembering where things are. Uh, let me look at my reducer. What is chains? Chains is a, and then I had mocks. Okay, see if I can remember how to do this. Um, add chain. Name push ups. What did I do wrong? Uh, maybe this is a waste of time trying to figure this out. But uh, this is another app I have that I'm working on that I haven't gotten very far with. Where is it? Request chain, chain, fetch chain, add chain. It takes a name. Oh, it's called chain. Silly me. What am I doing wrong? Add chain. Chain. Oh, it doesn't have an ID on it. That shouldn't matter. It should generate it. Length is zero. I'm really confused, folks. Type add chain. Chain. It's push ups. Cannot convert undefined or null to object. I'm really confused. Oh, is it the general error I'm getting in? Oh, I think it's because the, uh, I think something's wrong with my app. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, sorry. Anyways, uh, sorry, that was a tangent you probably didn't care about. My point being, I, I kind of wanted to show you and I'm sorry I can't get it quite working. Maybe I can, um, I think if I went to the store and uh, I change it to, where is load state? That's local storage. And if I maybe made the reduce, yeah, here's here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, import uh, initial 
Uh, what's my mocks look like? I think I can fake this real quick. Data. Okay. Import data from mocks. Okay. I'm getting an object of data. Uh, chains. I'm going to literally set this to data.data, I think, is what I need to do. Did I just stream my keys? I didn't think I did. If I did, I did. I'll have to change them all. And then uh, I'm going to unload. I'm going to get rid of the load state on the store. Tell me if I showed my keys. If I did, I mean, it happens. I'll, I'll fix it. Why isn't it showing the state? What did I fuck up? I mean, my keys are stored down here. So I don't think I've shown them. Unless I accidentally pulled up that file. Um, let's log it out. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's why. It's one level too wrong. All right, I don't know why it's showing it. Sorry, y'all. Um, my point being, uh, maybe this is something we can work on together too. Uh, so sorry to digress. This is how I am. I get fixated on a problem and I can't, uh, I gotta scratch that itch for a while. So my apologies. I know that's not why you came here. You came here for my wit and my charm. So let me bring that back. Uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. I see some of y'all are going to bed, as I always like to do. If you have any questions for me, they can be about React, they can be in general, uh, please ask away. Uh, I'll stay on for about five, ten more minutes. Uh, I've got a little bit of beer to drink. And, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, if you need to share your life story with me in the chat, that's fine too. Like, um, I'm always here to uh, listen. Uh, I'll do my best. Uh, I know some of you have been tweeting me as this has been going on. Um, and I get to that after the show. Um, but yeah, all good man is your stream, bro, Safino. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Ruse Bay. Um, yeah, uh, I think, I think when we start doing, I, I think building some apps could be fun to do on the stream. Napcats asks, how many cats do I have? I currently have two. Um... Let's see if I have, uh, there was a really great picture of him I posted a while back. Um, I'm going to, I know y'all want to see my Twitter stream on air, but it will have pictures of my cat somewhere. So, uh, let's see if I can get to my profile. I don't know why it does that. I clicked that to get to that. I didn't click anything else. You saw that. Um, but I think... Where are my cats? My cats. Oh, did you see how muddy I got on Thanksgiving? That's a lot of mud. Um, there are my cats. Do you see my cats? Y'all can see my cats. This is Creos. Uh, he's our he's our male cat. Um, they're both named after Mass Effect characters. So Creos is named after Thane Creos, the assassin from Mass Effect Two and Three. And then uh, this is Tali. And she is named after uh, Tali Zoravas Normandy, if you really know your Mass Effect history. And completed her, um, uh, what's it called? Her, um, her mission, uh, the one where she, you gain her trust, basically. I, for, I forget what it's called. Uh, loyalty mission. Uh, and this is Tali. So those are my cats. And they're the, they're the hell beasts that try and get in here and the reason they need uh, automatic feeders and stuff like that. 
Um, you could do something like a blue jean zoom call to see some of us viewers. Yeah, I could I could do something like that, but I don't know how I would choose. I would maybe have to do something like a lottery where each week, um, um, where each week maybe someone got to be, uh, got their face alongside and got to ask me live questions and stuff like that. Uh, Ruse Bay says, "How about a weird React component CLI helper?" Uh, I'm not in. I, are you just meaning like a React CLI? Because ironically, um, of all the other things that I've started to build at one point, um, uh, I built. Uh, it's it's gotten nowhere, but as most of my projects, I started something. Uh, let's see, React projects. Uh, the CLI thingy is literally what I called it. Oh, I, I think it's actually minimal. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you hear that? It resonated my guitar. Um, uh, I kind of started this minimal CLI. Um, I haven't looked at the code in months. Um, it, yeah, I was using Commander, but uh, I had this idea of like just being able to very quickly um, generate presentational container components um, and maybe making a few others. Um, but it's to kind of go alongside my nano kit, which is like my tiny react boilerplate. Um, and then like the templates are like, uh, like a normal component follows this where it outputs that or a container component or, um, presentational component. So I kind of started that. Um, yeah. Um, uh, so I, I just funny, I've, I've kind of already begun something like that. We could definitely work on it. Um, oh, apparently it's food time for my cats. I'm going to stay on stream for a minute. I'm just going to let her in. Actually, y'all want to meet Creos. He's going to hate this, by the way. Maybe I can get him for a moment. Aww. This is Creos. He hates this. He's going to run away. Okay. Come on. So uh, that was Creos. He really hates being held. So, um, okay. Let's see. All right. Kevin suggests maybe not on the stream the full time. But see our faces. I kind of liked a lot. Maybe it could be cool. I don't know. I, I If I ever get above 30 followers, like if I can find a time to be on stream, that's not like when everyone on the East Coast is going to bed. Yeah, maybe I'd get there. Um, it's uh, We chatted about the CLI a while ago. And then uh, most of you are half-baked side projects too. Me too. I use side projects mostly to learn. And once I've learned something, I got to move on. Um, I am trying to be better about like thinking of things and finishing them. And mostly the reason I want to start finishing things honestly is, is passive income. If I can, uh, if I can create uh, projects that derive some income passively, like that would be really nice. Um, I, it would be nice to pay down my student loans faster, uh, save for a home faster, that kind of thing. So, uh, that's tough to do. Um, but it's something that's on my radar. Um, and you never know. You might come up with something that's a decent company idea or something like that, or y you don't know. Uh, I think, I think having these creative outlets is really important. But um, I, I try not to. I'm really good at beating myself up, but I try not to beat myself up too much about this kind of thing. But it is what it is. All right, folks. It is. It is after. Uh, it is after ten o'clock here, which means Napcats. It's after one o'clock where you are. I think. Uh, I really appreciate you staying up. Um, I hope you get a full night's sleep and you get to, uh, you know, whatever you're doing tomorrow, work or whatnot, you, you do well at. Um, everybody, I'm so thankful that you come hang out with uh, a fool like me. Makes me feel um, appreciated and that I have something of value to offer uh, to others. Um, I take a lot of um, pride and a lot of um, inspiration from just being able to um, 
to be able to have something of value to give to people, right? Like we all want to feel valuable and you spending time with me and interacting with me on Twitter and the chat here, they, they make me feel, um, they make me feel, uh, valued and I appreciate that. So, um, and I want you to know I value you. I, without your input, without this, it would just be me, um, a lonely, like it would just be me in this room and my wife would be really pissed <laughs> and she would rightfully be upset because uh, it's time I could spend with her. And that's actually what I'm going to go do now. I'm going to go spend the rest of my night with my wife. Um, if you have significant others, I hope you spend time with them. I hope you let them know you love them, that kind of thing. Uh, and just know uh, I'm thankful for you. Um, I'll be back next week. I think it'll be Tuesday again. Um, I have a, uh, I have a react meetup to go to on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you next Tuesday. Please send me, um, any ideas you have for the stream. Uh, you can send them to me as a tweet. You can send them to me as a direct message. Y'all know my Twitter. It's Kyle Shevlin. Um, tell your friends about this stream. Tell them if you like it or, um, like what you appreciated about it. You know, uh, I would love to get more people in here. It'd be fun. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, I hope you're having a good start to your week. And uh, I hope you have a good night. So, good night and sleep well. Bye. Kratos, do you want, want a little more food? I tried to show Kratos on camera. Yeah.